नमो तस् भगवत अर्हत सब्जेक्ट ऑफ द डिस्कोर्स टुडे इज कर्मा एक्शन एंड यूनिवर्सल लव हाउ थ्रू एक्शन one can transform the limited mind into the universal state and through that into the transcendental state of deliverance freedom from worldly existence worldly existence is fraught with all kinds of difficulties sufferings is embedded in the in the process of the world of the world the existence itself everything in the world is impermanent everything is a process of change all the time and impermanence by its very nature means something that is unstable therefore unpredictable unpredictability is a synonym of unknowing not knowing what may happen what will happen so from this stage of unknowing to the stage of ultimate stage of knowing in its universal way totally that is enlightenment is like the diamond which is born out of stone out of solid the solid earth elements what was once uh, let us say uh, sand becomes stone and stone is transformed into diamond once it is turned into diamond it is is no longer the stone or the sand or the earth elements is something very very precious it has got the quality of the sun itself the nature of the sun it illuminates it shines all the time it has immense value and uh, a very very hard and powerful indeed that is exactly what happens in spiritual life the buddha is the diamond spiritual diamond the spiritual sun diamond is nothing but the sun in your pocket in your ring so the quality of the sun it shines it dispels in darkness of unknowing and all that so now a buddha he starts with what now he in the jataka he have got this his own uh, autobiography where the buddha says he starts as uh, sumedha pandita a ordinary person a prince of course and he at the age of 16 when he was in the school there somebody comes and says both uh, both parents suddenly died his father and mother leaving the entire uh, principality of which the the parents and the father was the the ruler so now at the age of 16 he becomes the ruler of the principality of the little kingdom he becomes a king now the very the news that the parents have expired died they are no more impermanent so it struck him how come he is a very powerful person the king and all that is no more and that is the nature of life that is the nature of worldly existence impermanence the parents never knew that they are just going to die like that unknowing 
enveloped in the darkness of unknowing is the nature of life in worldly existence. Once it dawned on him that worldly existence is just that, in the deep darkness of unknowing, beings act in all kinds of ways that only involves them more and more in worldly existence. The act motivated by greed, motiva motivated by hatred, motivated by egotism, motivated by ignorance. And then involve themselves endlessly due to all these motivations, born of ignorance and unknowing, all these actions. Every action has a power. The power, it has a potency. The potency means here that it has the power to produce a result. That is the potency in an action. And if it is an intentional action, the potency is immense. An unintentional action, which is just a mechanical action, an instinctive action, may not have that potency. But it has got other, uh, you see, significance, which is as important. So, this young prince now decides to give up his kingdom. Now his father had accumulated seven treasuries of diamonds and jewels and rubies and all kinds of precious things and wealth, gold and silver. Seven treasuries. Now he decides to give away the whole lot. And the reasoning, he says, well, they owned all these so-called ownership, but carried nothing with them when they went. So when I go, which I must one day, I am going to carry all this. Not the gold, the silver, and the jewels, and the gems, and the diamonds, but the attachment the tremendous clinging to all this wealth and then suddenly passing away. By giving up that attachment, that clinging, through the power of, that also is action, clinging, attachment. But through the power of renunciation, giving up the ability to be freed from clinging, ability to be freed from greed, from the said, the false notion of ownership, minus, minus, all that. Now, with this ability, I will carry with me a wealth which nothing else in the world can give. That is the spiritual wealth. So this person now thought, Lives, hundreds of lives and thousands of lives. He evolves like the diamond, the sand, and the stone takes millions and billions of years to evolve and be transformed into the diamond. So the Buddha spiritual, his life his spirituality from the state of an ordinary prince to the state of a supremely enlightened being whose mind has become like a diamond, like, you see, a magnet from an ordinary iron filing. But once it, it is transformed into a magnet, it transforms iron, or, iron itself into time, uh, magnets. So once he becomes a Buddha, a supremely enlightened one, a true savior of beings, because he has saved himself. So once he becomes the Buddha, through evolution,
listen through life after life after life, hundred thousand lives. And we come to the enlightened one, the spiritual diamond that cuts into everything, all the, the very core of ignorance and undoing. becomes the most precious one. Therefore it is called Buddha Ratana, the precious the treasure gem of the Buddha, of the enlightened one. So now this, he, by being enlightened, by being the sun, the light giver, now he illuminates the hearts of millions and billions of beings in different planes of existence and is capable of making them enlightened because he is enlightened, supremely enlightened. So now, this, the spiritual journey, the pursuit of spiritual perfection, from the state of a base metal or a base, a piece of stone to the state of a diamond, this journey from the base state to the ultimate state of perfection, that spiritual journey, that spiritual pursuit, starts with just one small thing and that small thing is know yourself in Dhammapada he says Attahi Attano Natho Kuhi Natho Parosiya indeed one oneself is one's own saviour one's own master one's lord one who can free oneself who else who are the other else can do that for oneself? No. If you are in the jail, you have to work hard to get out of the jail. Nobody can take you out of the jail. The, the, the jailer and the workers, and although they only follow a certain code of conduct, code, and according to that they release and so on. So, but it is the prisoner who has to co complete his term in this case. The, uh, in, uh, the, you see, in the case of a, you see, the spiritual seeker who wants to get out of the jail of worldly existence. He has to work hard and spiritualize his mind, his consciousness. And to spiritualize his consciousness or mind means ultimately transformation of knowledge. So life starts, the mind, you can't catch the mind. It is non-corporeal, but you can catch the mind by knowing your mind. So now knowledge, knowing, is act as the state of knowing itself is the nature of the mind. So once you begin with self-knowledge, knowing yourself, and then what happens in four stages of spiritual, uh, you know, perfection? From self-knowledge, self -knowledge, you are, you, uh, it leads you to self-control, ability to control oneself, and that comes from self-knowledge. And from self-control to self-improvement, which simply means purification of knowledge itself, knowing oneself, and purify, bring about purification of mind. That is purification of self. Self-purification or self-improvement, and that leads to self-transformation. Once that happens, the, it is no longer a mind, no longer a piece of stone. It is a diamond, and that is enlightenment, state of enlightenment. It, you see, just like the sun, it gives forth light all the time. The diamond does light, bright it, 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 it emanates light. So, this journey, spiritual journey, 
the Buddha, I said, as Bodhisattva. He started long, long, long ago, and then in this, in his last life, he became the supremely enlightened. That is the journey for every spiritual seeker. We are caught in the world. No question about it. Any amount of theory, any amount of dogma, any amount of doctrine is not going to free us. Only when you take yourself seriously by knowing what you are doing, what you are saying, what you are thinking. So ultimately self-knowledge means knowing one's action. Know thyself means know thy action, my thy conduct. How you conduct yourself, behave yourself, how you think, how you speak, how you act. When you know all these, these are all things that you can know. It is that way that you know yourself. So knowing one's action means knowing oneself. And by knowing oneself, one uh, brings about self-control, the ability to control oneself. That means control over action. And that is where morality starts. If killing is done because motivated by anger, hatred or delusion. Somebody told me once, well, these animals have been uh, in America. They said, American, the animals have been created for us to eat. So I said, very good, fine doctrine, wonderful, my dear. So now a tiger comes to you and says, hey, human beings have been created for me to eat. Same logic. Will you agree? No, you shoot him. So this kind of theories and all that glorified as a religious doctrine doesn't help. It is justifying human greed. Plain and simple. Just that. So, self-improvement, self-knowledge means also ability to control oneself, or control one's action instead of killing, save life, cultivate universal love, cultivate universal compassion. Suffer for the sake of others' suffering. Feel the suffering of the others and suffer yourself. How? that the other man may be freed from suffering. That is how you feel the suffering of the others. That is how compassion, when you have got compassion in your heart, you want to remove the pain of the other person. And you don't remove the pain by brainwashing anybody into any doctrine. You remove the pain in a very pragmatic, realistic way. If he is sick, okay, Give him medicine. If he is poor, okay, give him something that frees him from his poverty. If he is ignorant, give him something that is educated, and so on. From the gross to the subtle. Enable him to lead the pure life, ethical life. Follow the Panchashila, the five principles of universal validity. And his life will change. He will have not only self-knowledge, he will have self-control. And not only self-control, he will have, he will bring about self-improvement, self-purification, which means purification of action, which simply means ethical purification. A purification of morality, that is just what it means. And once you become, uh, bring about Moral purification, automatically you bring about mental purification because all actions arise in the mind and morality is concerned with good and bad action. So when you turn the bad into a good action, 
bad action into a good action and uh, control and then transform bring about transformation of the bad into a good you are bringing about transformation of your own mind from the bad mind to the good mind as simple as that so this way from self improvement self purification to self transformation and when that occurs you are completely changed the example we have mentioned these uh, example before that of milk you have milk good you can keep it for a couple of days turn it into a yogurt into a curd you can keep it for a week or 10 days turn it into butter you can keep it for 10 months turn it into ghee you can keep it for 10 years or more so that is called the transmutation or process of trans transformation the spiritual transformation occurs like this it starts with knowledge self knowledge and knowledge means the very nature of mind itself when knowledge is transformed it becomes wisdom and wisdom means it acquires the quality of diamond in the man is light wherever the wise man goes he spreads the light of truth not of theories not of dogmas not of this no truth and truth simply means that which exists that which exists means that which is real reality is truth because reality exists and truth exists so impermanence law of impermanence which governs the life of in the world and worldly existence is truth is reality you see a child with very beautiful little flower like baby now we can be an old fellow like me you can't help that is about to happen and then die now meanwhile from the state of a child to that of an old person you have been acquired you have been acting all your life whether you like or you don't from the morning to night all that you do is action you get up you wash you brush your teeth you go and take your food you do this you do that and the things until you sleep and there also the mind is not inactive but then these actions some are productive some are not productive some are uh, defunct so to say they don't have potency they are barren and some are uh, very potent so if you want to transform yourself you must transform your action if you want to transform your action you must know your action so that again knowing of the action can be done in a again another four stage like this four stage knowledge self knowledge self control brings brings about self control self control brings about self improvement or purification that brings about self transformation four stage evolution spiritual evolution so do to undergo the same process by means of action know the action have the uh, capacity to control your action what do you say what do you do what do you think and all that and by control your action you become your lord your master your savior you like this your action that kills you that brings all the suffering all the all the uh, miseries so you can save yourself from all that by transforming your action there is no longer an action it becomes a diamond action it changes the world because you have changed yourself 
Born 2,600 years ago. And brought about this transformation in millions of beings. That process is going on now. All of us who are as followers of the Master, trying to bring about light within our minds, the light that will dispel the darkness of greed, darkness of anger, darkness of egotism, darkness of superstitious adherence, darkness of dogma, fanaticism, hatred and all that. So this can be done by a definite path of transformation, the path of virtue whereby you turn your vice, your evil actions into good actions, Sheila, precepts of morality. That will say we change your mind, you meditate, that will bring further changes, it will sublimate your lower type of mental states into a higher divine states. You live like the divine beings, the Brahma gods. When you perfect your metta meditation, your meditation on universal love, and your mind itself becomes universal, transformed, gone beyond this i and my filled with universal love, universal compassion. Once you do that with meditative practice, then your knowledge slowly grows and it becomes diamond, it becomes wisdom. So this process of virtue, meditation and wisdom, transformation of all the three leads to enlightenment. And enlightenment simply means salvation from worldly suffering, freedom, deliverance, liberty, liberation from worldly sufferings. That's all. So in Nibbana, Nibbana is as real as, as life is real. World is real. Life is not a uh, imagination or um, a fantasy. It's there. It undergoes this process of impermanence and all that. So also the world so Nibbana is there. You go through the process of transformation, you reach. And once you reach, you, with the light of the Nibbana, with the freedom, Nibbana simply means freedom from suffering. Freedom from greed, freedom from hatred, freedom from the, uh, delusion and all that. When you are in contact with Nibbana, the moment you are directly experience Nibbana, you are liberated, your mind is transformed. And this is again a process of transformation. Now an arahat, for instance, is a diamond, is a magnet. It magnetizes the minds of innumerable beings. So the Buddhas, as a supremely enlightened one, the body is not there, but the Buddha's spiritual body is very much there, spiritual sun. And from that sun, spiritual sun, that spiritual sun, you see, rains down the light of wisdom in the hearts of beings, innumerable beings, in different planes of existence. It illuminates the minds of the human beings who are committed to spiritual perfection in these four stages I have mentioned. And he illuminates the hearts of the devas, of the divine beings of different realms of divinity. And so on. So now, self-transformation comes from self-knowledge. And that comes from knowing action. And by knowing action, transform. Uh, you bring about transformation of action. And life itself is transformed. That is all about spiritual life. Today, we have a very uh, uh, 
present uh, uh, duty, a task to share with you. Today we have a very good, uh, we have five guests from Europe. They have been helping us in so many ways as sponsors to our students in the schools and so on. And with expecting no result, no material benefit from it at all. They are just doing it for the sake of doing good. Unreserved good. Because that way you transform your mind. From a base mind to a sublime mind. To a transformed mind. So it's our pleasure to invite them in the, in the society. Uh, introduce them to you. Now, whatever Ananda will do that, and we will also request them to share their thoughts with you. How they like this place or the, their work and they have been going about, and how we can bring about a change in the international atmosphere of animosity through the spreading of universal love. Love in the form of generosity. Love in the form of sharing, which they are doing. All these differences between human beings, all this can go when you develop universal love. And your charity, your generosity is nothing but an expression and manifestation of that love. So, today we welcome them and we request them to share their thoughts with you. May the grace of Bhagavan Buddha, the supremely enlightened master, supremely enlightened lord of teacher of human beings and devas and divine beings, may by his grace or may his grace enlighten, bring about enlightenment within you. And you see, <coughs> surround your minds with the light of wisdom and with universal love. 